Jesus is in the house, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Praise God, praise God. I am glad that when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord, I'm just glad to be here tonight. I say it again, I'm glad to be here tonight. I was glad to be in that prayer room tonight, getting fired up. The Holy Ghost spoke to me tonight while I was in the prayer room. The Lord spoke to my wife just along the lines of what she was talking about in the prayer room. Some of y'all don't get serious with God. You're going to have some losses. It's quiet in here right now. Some of y'all don't believe me. You really don't believe me. You think that you can just go along and do what you want to do. And uh, now I'm going to be all right, Pastor. All right, just leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Don't, sp don't speak into my life. Just don't tell me anything. Don't 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 give me no direction. Don't tell. You better you better you better hope that you have a pastor that can speak into your life. Amen. There is some areas in your life you're not serious yet. In your prayer life. Get serious. Don't you go have losses. You think tough times now, you, you, you ain't seen nothing. You better allow me to talk to you. It doesn't take anything away from your character. It's not putting you down. You know, but you think that maybe you can glide and slide a little bit and it's going to be okay. I'm going to prophesy to some of you. I'm fixing to pastor this church and I'm going to tell you what I feel. And I'm not being rude, rude, ugly, and crude. I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to have losses if you don't. And doing anything in the flesh, you're going to make mistakes. And, you're going, and you think your job is bad now, you go and get a job that's got cheap labor. You're going to have to get two jobs that's going to really keep you out of church. Anything you do, you better pray over it and you better cover it in prayer because your family is at stake and I'm talking to the head night when the head does it right everything else follows along and everything goes well and this is not putting you down because this is going to be a man of God and I'm going to make a man of God out of him I know him I know him and I'm not putting him down and don't, even, don't, and don't anybody think I'm putting him down you know why I could talk to him tonight like this? Because he'll listen to me. He'll listen to me. He won't walk out of here like a lot of them have and get mad and go home and then talk about me. He's not going to do that. In fact, he, his wife won't let him do that. No, you think I'm kidding you. It's too many... There's too many that agree with one another in their flawed life, their flawed walk with God. And church, let me tell you something. There's many times my wife will tell me I ain't thinking right, I need to go to the prayer room. There's many times I'll tell her the same thing. And you know what? We need to listen to one another. And if we don't, losses will come. And the devil has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. And boy, you better let me pastor tonight because I got something to say. This is pastoring because I'm, I'm getting you some direction. Now clap your hands under the Lord. Brother Garza. I promise you he'll agree with me. People that play games and they think that they can glide and slide, you've watched them have losses in your congregation. And I'm not trying to, trying to, I'm not putting a damper on this church service tonight. Ever now and then, I don't do this all the time, and you know I don't. But I'm feeling it tonight. And I won't do it every service, don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. I won't do this every service.
service, but I'm going to tell you something. When God has something he's put on me and it's heavy, i gotta, I got to release that thing. Yeah. I can't tell everybody. I have a word for some other people here, but I can't tell them that because they might get mad and leave. But you know what? That's okay. I'll just let it simmer a little while and just watch them melt out, melt down, and then they're going to come to me and say, well, I, I could have told you that six months ago, sir. Probably could have saved you a lot of pain, but you wouldn't listen to me not then. But you'll listen to me now. you listen to me now. You're going to come to me. And then I, can, then I can talk to you, but if I come to you, it's out of time. You know, you don't want to listen to me. You want to do your own thing. Guess what? Just go ahead six months down where you have a meltdown and then you're going to come to me and say, wish to God this thing didn't happen. You're going to carry that, you're going to carry that baby everywhere you go, honey. And it ain't going to, it's going to squeal and scream all the way until you put that thing in God's hands. Boy, we got to die daily in this thing. We got to die daily. I mean, every day, I got to die out. Some of you young ones want to grow. You want to grow in the Lord, you're going to have to die out some things. You know what? I can tell you some things too. I really can. You say, oh, don't say what you want. She's young in the Lord. No, 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 no. It's not the youthfulness in the Lord. It's the willingness of living for God that she wants to do. That I can talk to her. There's some things that's coming your way and there's some tough times. There was, was some tough times. You know how to handle it. Pour yourself into kingdom things and watch God flourish. Watch Him flourish you. And, and don't get jealous now if something flourishes over here because of obedience. I wish God didn't. I wish God sometimes didn't talk to me like this. I mean, I wish I could just be a preacher, just preach a sermon for, for folks that smoke cigarettes and go home and, and not worry about it and just pay, get, give me your tithes and I just preach a little soft little message like the rest of the preachers do down the street and, and, and I could just go home and just get fat on your tithes and just, you know, have this little group that, you know, that don't want... No, I'm going to build a church. I got to build a church. I got to build a church. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. But I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes churches are built in pain. Sometimes churches are built in a struggle. We struggle to get there, but we get there. Come on, church. Let me preach to you tonight. I want to tell you something. You can grow out of your, st uh, of your stigmas and, and your situations. But you got to make up your mind that this thing is real and we serve a real God. And he has real touch feelings by infirmities. He, he knows how to reach down and touch every heart. And I'm fixing to baptize this guy here in Jesus' name. He don't know it yet, but I'm fixing to. It's, it's, it's coming. I mean, it's germinating. Boom, 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 boom. More and more and more and more and more all the time. <laughs> Why? Because he likes what I'm preaching. You say, oh, you hadn't talked to him about it. Don't have to. God's already spoke to me. I, I'll try to get some of the water out of there if I'm going to get in there with him because that thing might work. Look at him grin. He knows what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Clap your hands under the Lord. Okay, let's sing. Sing like a mockingbird, baby. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. And I taste it. The sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are with
a bittersweet situation the Juarez family a beautiful couple in our church lost their 19 year old daughter that was discovered in a field murdered in Lockhart last week they came to our church Sunday and they were so broken weeping at the altar it's at this time a pastor is not designed to fix it the only thing I know we as pastors and the congregation can do is weep with the weepers rejoice with those that rejoice and continually walking with them in prayer while they're experiencing their pain keep this family in prayer I put this on Facebook now listen to me I, I probably received about 48 yeses or likes but this is what really got a hold of me I had a, a friend of mine his name is Mark Wilhoyt some of y'all may have heard of him and uh, he's a preacher minister of mine that I went to church with in the Christian Life Center years back he actually shared this for y'all and from his share or my share, I don't know how it went out, but there was 11 shares that went out everywhere, all over the country about this situation. 11 shares outside of what I wrote and outside of what he wrote. So that's, that means that there's 11, 12, 13 people on Facebook that actually said, I want, to, I want this on my Facebook. And, and I only saw there was 260 likes on his page. And there was about 60 comments on his page about prayer going up for this couple. Now, that's outside of the other 11 that he sent out. Or they come to my page or his page and share it. There was, I do know at least... 11 shares on Facebook about this situation. What I'm trying to say tonight, there's prayers going up for you everywhere. And I am believing that God is going to take these tears and bottle them up. And every prayer that's prayed by every individual way out here in eons wherever it may be it has it, probably gone all over the United States and I'm believing God for some miracles in y'all's lives I can't promise you that there's not going to be some pain because of loss every time you have loss you have pain but at the time that there's going to be a time when God is just going to lift you up and you're going to say oh my God I don't understand this but I'm smiling again and I, I can have some joy again and I, I can those times will come and, and I'm not I can't say they're coming right now but but oh my god I think people have taken this so serious brother Mark and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the point that that people are just buying into it Let's raise our hands and love God. Oh, yeah. 
Brother Mark, you can come on up here. I'm going to turn this thing over to a few minutes. Brother Mark and his wife's going to minister tonight. And the Juarez family, we will, we'll, during the church service, after church service, we're going to pray for you again. We want to, we want to, we, we love you guys. just like they are and watch God do the work yeah clap your hands one more time to the Lord go back to your seat if you'd like I'm fixing to turn this over here in just a few minutes and uh, let's all stand we're going to give to the Lord as God has blessed and thank you for you that support the work of God it takes money to pay the bills. It takes money to, every time you come in this place, it takes money. But I don't like to just say it takes money. I just want to say, you know what, there's just an art of giving, and there's not only just an art of giving. There is a blessing when you give. God gives back. Press down, shake it together, run it over. And I also want to say that they have some DVDs, CDs, or whatever, CDs out there for sale and uh, of their singing they're, they're tremendous they, 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 I just they're, you know what Let, can I put it this way they're just unique y'all got a unique ministry and that's good because you don't want to be cookie cutter like everybody else but y'all are not cookie cutters you got a unique ministry and I'm excited about this this couple praise God and uh, knowing that that God has his hand on them. Amen. Praise God. So let's all stand and give now to the Lord as God has blessed you. Thank you for, for supporting the work of God. Father, we, we pray. We just pray over everything. We pray that you administer healing in this congregation tonight. We pray for every person here, every soul here. God, we, we need direction. We need, to, we need to know to come in and go out among the, the people of God. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would uh, spread forth your strength and power tonight, Lord. We just glorify you and thank you, Lord, for all things according to your will and your purpose. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 
Let's give the Lord as God has blessed. We got some announcements. Y'all may be seated. If y'all are standing, y'all can see it. Friday at 7 p.m., we have a singles event. So if you're interested in that, see Sister Amber for more details. Saturday at 9 a.m., there's men coffee and fellowship at Dunkin' Donuts like we usually have. Usually, I mean, we, we meet up, we'll eat some donuts, and just have some good fellowship. Talk about maybe what's been going on the week, maybe what's on your heart, and it's, it's good fellowship. 9 a.m. also, we have a POB hospitality work day in Potluck. So if you are interested in that, I'm pretty sure that even though you may not be a part of the hospitality, if you want to work, I'm pretty sure you can come. Oh, it's canceled. Never mind. Never mind. Let's reverse like we usually do and forget I ever said anything. Also, at Saturday, 5 p.m., there is an SFC closeout rally at POB. That means that it's taking place here at 5 p.m. So even, even though you may not be in the youth, if you want to have a good service, if you're not doing anything at Saturday at 5 p.m., usually I'm not, so you have no excuse. You can come up here, and I'm pretty sure you, you'll hear some good preaching, even though it may be centered for the youth. I'm sure you probably get something out of it as well. So let's come, let's come support our section, our district, and everything. All right, Sunday, 8 a.m., praise practice, 9 a.m., prayer, 10 a.m., Sunday school, and 11 a.m., worship. August 24th is Sarah Preston's diaper shower after church. She going to be having twins, everybody. She's not, she's not too excited about that. <laughs> that means what you would usually get for a regular diaper shower, get double. Please, they're going to need also, on the 25th, we'll have a choir, pra choir practice at 7 p.m. 26th is going to be the senior potluck and movie night at the church. You're going to be watching War Room. Even if you've already seen War Room, you're a senior, come anyway. It's good fellowship. 27th, Ladies Spa afternoon at 2 p.m. at Missy's house. I don't, I'm not a lady, but that sounds pretty good if I was a lady. So... It says leadership calendars are due today. They're not due today. They were actually due on Sunday. But if you still have not turned them in, because I have only gotten one calendar so far. So some people ain't turning their stuff in. If you, if you have them with you, please turn them in to me. 
We need them turned in as soon as possible so that we got everything planned. You know how we go online and we look at the POP church calendar and see what's going on? Well, you're not going to know what's going on if you don't turn in your leadership calendar. So, all right. Well, how many of y'all love y'all's are we, are we turning, turning back? Yeah. How many of y'all love y'all's pastor like we usually do? Come on, stand up. Stand up. Honor the man of God. I'm not the one that's going to preach tonight. Brother Garza, it's good to have you in the house of the Lord, and I'm sure you need your, your wife up here and your family here in a few minutes. I'll let him invite you up here. Let's invite this man of God to preach for us tonight. He's been with us before. He's not a stranger, Brother Mark Garza. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate him so very much, and it's good to have the strong family home with us. Good to have him home. I had several people say, well, where's the Strongs around here? Well, they're vacationing, man. They're enjoying their self. They, huh? Holiday Inn or something like that. You know, they've been kind of they've been kind of taking off lately, hadn't they? They go to Indiana, come back home, and take off again, and look at her back here going, ah, <laughs> it's good, ain't it? It's good to get away. Yeah. You, you work hard for your money and your butts, and you know what? You got that air. She works for the airlines, you know, or, or the airport out there, the airlines, and she gets these free miles or whatever, you know, nice. like these, you know, and, or, or cheaper, whatever, cheaper rates, but, uh, and she takes advantage of those things. And I think it's good to do that. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Glad that they're home. Yeah. Need to share. This is my wife. <laughs> It's good to have this family here, and uh, I do I do want to let the um, Moraz family know that we are continually praying for you and, and love you guys so much. And uh, I think this has rattled everybody's cage. It's, it's rattled all of us. It's, sh it's shaken the community, and uh, we, we want to let you know that uh, lots of pull, lots of prayers behind you. Brother Mark Gazzara. Love you and appreciate you. Give him a hand, would you? Let's clap our hands to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one who definitely deserves it. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated here tonight. So glad to be here. I want to say thank you so much to Brother Chandler for having us come. We didn't know that we were going to come here tonight, but he was so kind to open the door to us and uh, again also I want to say thank you to all of you who have been supportive to my family uh, in our loss but I, I've always found out and realized that for anybody it applies to anybody that if there is ever a difficult time in marriage in your commitment to God jobs or school or whatever it might be it is always best to dive into the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He, he is the greatest healing source. The power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Works every time. Get lost in Jesus and you'll come out healed, saved, powerful, cleaned up. You can see better, feel better. Your emotions are lined up. Matter of fact, you feel greater than any superhero that Hollywood promotes, amen. You feel Holy Ghost power, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that my wife is here, and so I want her to come, and uh, I'm so glad, I feel so comfortable around Brother Chandler. Uh, being Spanish and also speaking English, I don't think I would ever fought, fit into a, a cookie cutter type mold, even funerals or whatever. I, I sometimes feel like, Lord, why'd you have to make me so kind of way different, Lord? You know, and so um, I'm glad my family is here. So uh, we're just going to sing. We're going to have church. And how about if we just all just dive into the power of the Holy Ghost? Listen, folks, listen. Pastor said it perfectly. The time served Jesus Christ is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not the weeks to come. If you hadn't been baptized, you just go on ahead and do it, amen? If you've not been filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, just go on ahead and get the Holy Ghost. If you've not connected to the Holy Ghost, connect again in Jesus' name. Do it again in Jesus' name. 
because the flesh will not leave you alone, the devil will not leave you alone, and the world will not stop tempting you. If we know those things, we might as well surrender to God. Amen. That's the best way to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you can be seated, I'm going to let my sweet wife do what she does. Her voice is much nicer than mine, and so we'll let her minister minister her style. So just worship the Lord with them. To be in our sister church in, in the Bastrop, uh, Pentecostals of Bastrop, we pray for Brother and Sister oh. Chandler and all of our family that's connected to this church. And I just rejoice in the powerful prayer meeting that I heard going on when we walked yes, through the door. Yes, Love that sound. Beautiful sound. Thank you, Lord. I want to say that it means so much to me that, they, that this church is here for them. And um, thank you so much from all of us. Thank you so much for being there and for loving them when we can't. And um, you have a wonderful pastor and pastor's wife. You really do. I enjoy visiting because I learned from them. And I picked up some tips tonight, brother, while you were talking. Thank you so much. Last night, around 3 in the morning, the Lord woke me up to pray for Lockhart. He said these things, and I feel in my heart I need to share them with this church because the revival in Lockhart is connected to this church. And he said two times. I didn't wake up the first time, but I was trying. But he told me the second time, and I got up and prayed. He said, strongholds in the city, get up. And I heard it, and I was trying to come out of a dream. And then I heard it again, strongholds in the city, get up. So I went into the restroom there at the hotel room, and I closed the door so I wouldn't disturb anybody but when I was praying in there he showed me that there were, there were, the revival in Lockhart is like a sleeping giant it's not a small revival it's a big revival that has not yet been released and that giant is being held down by seven strongholds in the city if you're a prayer warrior and God puts one of these on your heart I give it to you in Jesus name to pray for against these things because I really believe if that giant wakes up these chairs won't be enough in Jesus name hallelujah The first stronghold was the stronghold of depression. I don't live in Lockhart, but anybody that's in Lockhart, maybe you know. But the stronghold of depression you overcome with praise and worship. Isaiah 61 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy and gladness for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You must worship through the depression. And I would like my kids to help me sing this first song tonight called King Jesus is All. He really is enough for whatever we go through. And then we're going to go on to the next six quickly before my husband preaches. I want to worship my way through. Is there someone that would take the prayer request to pray against depression in Lockhart, Texas? Thank you, Jesus, for that. Hallelujah. 
Is there somebody that would worship with me right now and practicing for that? If there's a drummer I can wants to join in, they can. King Jesus is all. King Jesus is all. He's my all in.
You got everything I ever needed, Lord, and it's in you. I don't have to get it from any other source. Praise him, that's okay. Praise him. From the rising of the sun to the place where he sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And when I praise him, the devil leaves me alone. He goes on home. Hallelujah. I praise you, King of Kings. I praise you because you're everything, God. I praise you because you're worthy. Praise you because you're mighty, Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords, Savior of my soul. Oh, thank you, Jesus, if my people, which are called by my name, ooh, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What will happen, church? They will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. Oh, I praise you for it by faith, God. I praise you for it. Every stronghold must be broken in the name of Jesus. anything that holds back your blessing, Lord. Would you raise your hands if you know this and tell him, create.
Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is what we pray tonight in Jesus' name for Lockhart, Texas. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, so let's go over the first four. We're praying against depression. We're praying against, and the, and the way we get over depression is praise. Praying against hatred and violence, and that is overcome with love and peace. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It is righteousness. We're praying against false teaching. Number three, number four, we're praying against sexual promiscuity. Number five, the Lord said stubbornness or rebellion. And we overcome that by being willing to do whatever God asks of us to do. to the power and we must be willing hallelujah amen thank you Jesus I will be obedient God I will go whatever you want me to I will tell whoever you want me to tell I will do whatever you ask if you want me to fast if you want me to pray if you want me to witness if you want me to work in the church Jesus I will be obedient God I will be obedient in the name of Jesus willing this is what he said is going to bring this giant out of this rope, t being tied up in these ropes. Number six is fear. A bad case of what, it, what ifs in your brain can keep you from ever reaching your potential. Have not I commanded thee be strong and of a good courage? He told in Joshua 1 and 9, he said, Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. With thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will not hold back in doing what you have called me to do, God. I will not be afraid. And that's what this last song me and my kids are going to sing is about. It's called, I'm not afraid ashamed this spirit of coming out of the closet for everything that is not righteous must be matched in the church by the apostolics coming out of the prayer closet and saying I will not be quiet I serve one God whereas the Daniel the Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego of this generation I will not be afraid and bow down. Hallelujah. Let the Holy 
Holy Ghost talk to you.
husband the very last stronghold is just ahead, take it. simple prayerlessness That's right. what holds back the revival in Lockhart it's just the lack of prayer That's right. the last stronghold Amen. is just if my people would pray it would release me to let the giant wake up One more time, the seven strongholds that we are praying against. Number one, depression. We overcome it with praise. It's better than Zoloft, I promise. Praise therapy works every time. You will give yourself fully to it. Amen. It is a spiritual battle. Number two, what is the second stronghold? Hatred and violence, we overcome this with love and the peace of God that passes all understanding, and it keeps you from losing your mind. It keeps your heart and your mind. Number three, false teaching, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself. What do we do to every thought that doesn't line up? Casting that we bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Get your all you spiritual cowboys, get your lasso and lasso it in and tie it up. Bring it into captivity. Number four, sexual promiscuity is cured with repentance, a change, a renewing, creating me a clean heart. Number five was. Stubbornness and rebellion, and we cure that with a willing. I'm just willing. I love those billboards that say available. And I say, God, that's, that's what I want to be to you. Available, whatever. Anytime, anywhere, here I am, Jesus. Number six was fear. We must not be afraid. And finally, the last one was prayerlessness. My dad wrote a song that said, you are not the only one fighting with the flesh today. You ain't no weakling. Everybody needs to pray, so don't sweat it. Toughen up. Get your mind on the Lord. Toughen up. Get your mind on Jesus. Everybody needs to pray. Everybody needs to pray. Oh, Jesus. I like what your pastor said. My wife tells me, go pray sometimes, and I tell her, my wife, go pray sometimes. <laughs> Everybody needs to pray. Me too, sister. I can't do this on my own strength. And that is exactly what my husband told me. He wanted to preach here tonight. He wanted to preach plug into that power. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, folks, if you get the Holy Ghost real fast, we can go home real fast. Now, if you fight it, I can preach till 2 in the morning. Amen. Now, if you repent, let's be honest, folks. If we repent and if we get our face locked on God, our heart cleaned up, and we say, Lord, I'm open now, pour out the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just feeling way, way different here uh, uh, to, for this whole whole past week. We just came from the, the kids camp this past week, and we got the phone call, and we came out here, didn't know what part 
of the funeral service that we were going to do, but it is it is a, 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 a blessing that I got a chance to come out here. And I forgot to say also when I was standing there, it is a total miracle for myself to be standing there doing that funeral and even my cousin to be there standing there doing a portion of the funeral as well. It is a miracle from God. Point is that if you surrender to God, God has multiplicity of miracles packaged and ready for you in your life. Amen. Well, Brother Garza, what's holding me from them? You know what it is? It's you. Amen. You can't blame him. You can't blame your brother. If anybody's got a bad attitude, their mind not made up, it is you. Amen. Amen. You can't at the end of time say, I didn't make it to heaven because of brother so-and-so. No, no, no. It's you. Amen. So if you and I repent and seek God, God begins the miracle process. Amen. Now, folks, I've been a pastor now almost going on seven years old. I I'm totally preached way different now. I mean, I'm just fed up with sin. Let's be honest. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the lying, the fussing, cussing, complaining, whining, crying. Tough it up. You ain't the only one fighting with this old body, fighting with that old devil. You got to get back in there again in the name of Jesus and hit the devil right in the jaw. It's a fight to the struggle. It's a fight to the end. No wonder Paul says, be a good soldier. Endure hardness. Amen. Amen. It's the honest truth, folks. It is the honest truth. We got to toughen up, especially in this age, in this time that we are living in. I'm way not in my text, amen. But that's quite all right, amen. We need to toughen up, folks. Amen. I say that, I, I, I'm so blessed. I say this because not being raised in the church house is a, is, a, is a negative, and that's true. It is a big negative to not grow up in the church house and not having the conveniences and the beauty of love and uh, the beauty of uh, somebody always there for me and supplying my need. And I love that, and I want to supply that to my kids, you know. But uh, uh, sometimes kids don't learn stuff until you heat their diaper up a little bit. And I'm not talking about a microwave. I'm talking about a belt, you know. And, and, uh, and uh, so sometimes it is pain that pushes us. It, it, it is struggle that moves us forward and makes us make up our minds and say, I am going to serve God today. And until my last day, I got my mind made up, my feet are planted, I'm going forward, and as I'm going forward, one of these days, I'm going to go up in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that because of his pain, because of his struggle, because of his battle, the Lord learned obedience. Amen. Amen. It takes a struggle. It takes a battle for us to finally say, yes, I'll clean the room. And even for us preachers, we don't like it. But hey, we got a Lord, I would like this, but there's a church that's got to be blue. Lord, I would like this, but Lord, there's more souls to win. Lord, it'd be nice if I was over here in Florida on vacation, God, but I got to preach another sermon. You won't let me sleep until I preach it. Hallelujah. Precious Lord. Precious Lord. Precious Lord. Oh, God. Oh, if we could all take it to heart, I'm going to make up my mind to be baptized. Where's that guy that needs to be baptized? I don't tell you to sit over. Just get baptized, man. Get it over with. Come on. Well, what y'all going to do with me? You know what we're going to do with you? We're going to love you. We're going to love you. You're going to be our brother. You're going to be our family, and we're going to love you. And together, we will conquer this journey. And together, we'll march forward in Jesus' name. Come on. Amen. 
Some would say, well, you got to explain all the theological stuff. Yes, probably. But I'm telling you, you can have all the theology you want. I want power. I want that Holy Ghost. I want whatever that name is that is called over me and it's got power to blot out my sins. I want that power. I want that power that washes away my sins when I call on the name of Jesus. I've got to have that power. I've got to have that power source that changes the life. Let me tell you something here, folks. You're looking at a young man that stood up in public school. It was a time for oral report. Uh, and I stood up there, and it was my turn. Mark Garza, it's your turn. I got up there, and I said, I was shaking. I'll take a zero. And I sat down. But look at me now, you lying devil. You thought you could put pride fear and shame but it took one zap of that powerful Holy Ghost to raise up a Spanish boy and said I'm gonna make a preacher out of this zero taking student amen and I'm gonna get him talking so much that sometimes he goes past nine o'clock talking about the goodness of Jesus Christ come on folks I am in this boat as well as you amen and if you and I agree together that we are going to connect to the source of power that changes anybody that connects. If you give yourself to this, it will transform you forever. You know and I know that we have not, in this area, reached the potential of filling this whole place up. Sometimes I feel crazy. I do. I just cannot leave people alone. I did one funeral a while back. I said, I'm going to baptize all of you in Jesus' name. Oh. My mission is to pray for everybody to get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because you know I know that carnality, that old flesh, that old stubbornness. We got to have Holy Ghost. We gotta have power. Oh God, we need you, Jesus. Let's stand here. I'm finished. I'm finished. Come on. Who wants the Holy Ghost? Some people. Some people say I'm shy. Well, you might be, but you know what the root cause of that is? Pride. Don't call it shy. You're proud. Sorry, Pastor. I'm pastoring. That's the honest truth. Hey, I'm gonna preach with it. Come on. It's pride. You know why Shy is worried about self? You're thinking about self. Who's going to see me? Who's looking at me? Well, I'm shy. Well, you might be shy, but the root of all that shyness is pride. You need to break beyond yourself, yield to Jesus, and receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And if he throws you on the ground, he throws you on the ground. But when you get back up, you're going to have power that's come from heaven. And you'll turn a shy boy, a shy girl, a shy girl to sing and to praise the Lord without shame, without reservation. Jesus changed us. Help us. We have a world that is in need of the apostolic people. We have a world that is in need. Why, 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 is our, why is our country kind of messed up? Why are we voting for these crazy two people or whatever? And I'm not a politician. You know what it is? Preachers don't preach and saints don't live with the preachers don't preach. We need preachers that keep on preaching. And they kick the Holy Ghost out of the church. Well, that's not necessary because theologically or whatever. For folks, sometimes we got to throw all that kind of stuff. God is the power source that keeps everything moving, alive, and well. As I said, for those that were in the funeral, amen, God does not need our worship. We need the worship. I sent a small little recording to our home church and they're having service tonight and they're nervous as can be. I know they are. They're doing it themselves tonight. So that's good progress for a home missions church. Amen. Amen. But I just recorded in there seeing 
a picture of a basketball or, or basketball and a small little boy and he was looking up just like that and he was looking at a, a professional basketball player a giant of a man and of course his goal was to become that amen and the only way for you to become like Jesus is for you to worship what is the main thing in your life amen when you worship him, you become him. It's not that he needs the worship. We need it. We need it. We need it. Lord, you are my hero. I don't mind basketball heroes. I don't mind football heroes. You can just go ahead and buy a football, put their name on it. That's fine. But don't hold back any worship from the one that you're going to become, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. God help us. Oh, Savior. Oh, Savior, Savior. I feel a lot of electricity here in this place. How about we just all connect to the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Remember being a brand new convert? I maybe said it here last time. Remember being a brand new convert? It was the same service. I had received the Holy Ghost. It was another service. I came out. I started speaking in tongues up front. I ran to the back. I told my sister, I got it again. Same service. I ran back up front, raised my hand, spoke in tongues again. And I ran back. I said, I got it again. I ran back. I did it about five times. Spoke in tongues, ran back. I said, I got it again. You know and I know because we both have this human package that we live in. We need to get the Holy Ghost again. Because anger will come. Lust will come. Depression will come, sadness will come, all these various battles, fear will come, and we need to get the Holy Ghost again, and then again, and then again. Why can't we not keep it? It's here, it's here. But the Bible calls it that we have tasted of a world to come. Amen. I'm going to close up. Get something fiery, Sister Garza. Something real good. Something fiery. Come on. Come on. Now, hey, hey, hey. Who was raised in the, in the church house? All right. Who was not raised in the church house? I got to raise my hand and my foot. Amen. Amen. Come on. You know that devil had us like puppets. Amen. And there was no shame, no pride, all kinds of junk happened. But sometimes we come into the church house and all of a sudden we get all sophisticated and we can't praise God like we used to praise God. And sometimes we're ashamed to connect to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Israel, you need the more power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them up, George. Bring them up, Tony. We got to conquer that. Mr. Mama, you need to come on up. Do these guys always sit back there? I don't want to offend y'all. Come on up. Come on up. Come on, y'all. Let's connect to the power of the Spirit of God. Let's just begin to praise the Lord. Mr. God, help. Mr. God, to help me out. Let's just raise our hands and just, let's just start speaking in tongues. How's that sound? It was a normal thing. It was a normal thing in the early church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
I'm excited. Man, listen, this is a good old big fish. <laughs> I love my daughter's laugh. I'm going to laugh like her. This is just the entry, folks, of what God is fixing to do. You know what? Revival hadn't quit around here. Holy Ghost had quit around here. Oh my God. Ken Coates, going to be a new avenue. How do you get the Holy Ghost all over again? Just get clean with God and forgiveness and repentance and ask God to forgive your sins and cleanse your mind, cleanse your spirit from all of the debris in the name of Jesus. We have the Holy Ghost fit back here right now. Hallelujah, God. name of Jesus Christ I baptize Ken Coates in Jesus name for the remission of his sins calling upon the name of the Lord in Jesus name Love. 
I, I want to tell you something. I don't know if I can endure anything better than this. Oh, my God. If you go home unchanged, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's, it's not my fault. It ain't your fault. If you go home unchanged, I, I'm going to tell you all something. I, I, I talked to uh, um, Emilio and uh, Blanca. I told them. I said, if anybody lays hands on you and says, oh, it's going to be all right, hogwash, it's not all right. God's going to heal in process. It's not going to be just all right. Well, you're going to go away different. Now, yeah, you will be different, but you're going to come, you're going to still carry some things in your mind for a while. And you know what? God's the healer, and he's going to heal in process. There's some things that Michael, so there we go. Get the little clicker. Thanks. Um, let's all stand our feet. Oh my Lord. Let's let's give this couple a hand. I, I I'm telling you. I, I I was over here and I was telling Brother Garza, I says, My God, what tame work. This is just, I mean, from daddy down to mama down to the kids. What a teamwork. I, I love the way they operated tonight. It was just phenomenal. Give them a hand, would you? And, 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 and uniqueness, uniqueness, uh, the way you minister playing, but you minister while you play. I don't see much of that. That is very, it's, folks. That's gifted, and that's anointed, and I love it. And you know what's so good about this? If, if Pentecost gets a place where they're in competition, they're already out. I love it when people get in here and he preaches his heart out. There's no better preaching than that tonight. No more anointed than this tonight, and I love it. It's going to add to this church. It's going to add to this church, and God's going to build this church. And Lockhart, here we come. Bastrop, here we come. It ain't only Lockhart. We need to be a witness in our city as well. And Bastrop and Lockhart are just going to be twin sisters, and buddy, they're just going to have Holy Ghost moves of God together. Praise God. I don't believe we've I don't believe we've even touched the hem, the hem of this thing yet, and, and all of the people that's in y'all's family. My God, y'all got a huge family. Whoa, a lot of them people from Lockhart that y'all's family down there. Is there a lot of them from Lockhart that's that's over there? Huh? Man, we got our work cut out. You know what I want? And I'm praying. I'm praying that I will fill your house up and have to go to a bigger house because everybody's wanting a Bible study in, in Lockhart. That's what I'm praying. I want you to pray with me on this. Amy? Amy and John, did you have that Bible study in your home? Don't It, it ain't just me, you, and my, and my four no more. Honey, it's going to be big. Think big. Think, think. I got people out here that need God. I love Amy and John. They're, they're just phenomenal here, and they've been so workable. And so, Brother Ken Coates, come on up here, man. Let's give him a hand, would you? Guess what? I, I have somebody that's just as loud as I am in this church. I met my match, man. And I met somebody that is not, he's not quite. He can get loud and rowdy just like me. Guess what? He's my friend, too. I want to say something. Well, I tell you, God has blessed me with eight beautiful children and a faithful, beautiful wife. In a faithful, beautiful congregation here to welcome me with all my faults. 
They loved me when I rejected them, just like the Lord. Brother Frank always keeps me going because I love hearing him talk. And he just, he, all these beautiful people here, and this pastor, he wouldn't give up on me. And all these people here just kept loving me. I didn't think I wanted the love. I thought I had it, I, but I came here broke. Things happened at the past. We got to leave it there. I came broke. He mended me now. I love every one of you. If I can help you anything, I'm here for you. Because like I say, you love me when I didn't think I wanted it. I got a lot to love. I love you, Pastor. I love this guy. He's done nothing but add to when he's come into this church. And brother, we love you, and you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, he's one of these guys that come in. He's a, he's a good old Baptist boy. Yeah. And I, I've had several of them to come into this congregation. And, and really, there's one back there, black shirt on back there. He says, I ain't no churchy guy. He says, I've been hurting churches. And I ain't, uh-uh. I said, well, just let me be your friend, man. That's all I want to be, just a friend. And my God, he's been with me over a year now, man, living for God. And his whole family's talking in tongues, got baptized, all of them. My next door neighbor. Church revival, revival, and your mission feels right next door to you. It's everywhere you go, man. Come on down there. I want you to take a picture with us here. I want his wife. I want my wife. Hey, I, I want to let you know something about my wife. My wife. I love my wife. She's my brother. Yeah, get him. She is. She's about like your wife is with you. She's. She's team. We work good together. Team. Team. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, Brother Garza. Where's his wife? I want his wife over here, too. Sister Garza. Okay, ladies.